Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Innovation Culture with me, James Poulter. And on today's show, I'm going to be talking about how do you build an innovation culture in your business and what are the different types of ways of bringing innovation into different groups with individuals, with different people working in your business. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the innovation pendulum. Where do you sit on the innovation pendulum? Coming up in this today's episode of Innovation Culture with me, James Poulter. So building a culture of innovation in a business is no easy thing. We all have different approaches to it, different ways of thinking about what does innovation even mean, and certainly different ways of getting into it. And you often see different types of typical scenarios that innovation sits within a business. In my personal experience, having worked both in building our business at Vixen Labs, our innovation-led emerging technology company focused particularly on voice and artificial intelligence, we've seen that we've had to break into many different businesses, types of culture, and try and see how they can bring in something like a new technology like voice. And in my previous roles, working both with startups, helping them getting up and running, and also working in big businesses like Lego and agencies, I've seen that there's many different types of ways of innovation becoming embedded into a business. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk through a couple of the different versions of what I like to call the uh, pockets that sit on the innovation pendulum. And to do that, uh, let's bring up this. So. The innovation pendulum is uh, something that we've developed here, thinking about the different types of ways that innovation can come into a business. And what I want to show you in this video is that it's lots of different ways that innovation actually happens when you are working in a business. Um, there is no particular, um, you know, right or wrong way. We all sit on this uh, pendulum. And the pendulum in particular has many different stages to it and you'll often find that businesses are often swinging in one direction before beginning to swing back. So let's just talk about the different types. The first is outsourced. Many businesses find themselves uh, trying to get something new done in their business and they end up looking uh, to outsource their, their overall business uh, needs and requirements by often bringing in consultants, working with agencies and obviously uh, in our current world uh, we wouldn't uh, say that that's a bad thing at all, keep doing it. But what we would say is that you often find that when it's thinking about cult innovation being an outsourced task, that might be outsourced to a department or it might be outsourced to a third party, is that can often lead to people forgetting that innovation is everybody's job in a business. It's your job too. So, innovation can become uh, siloed, and that's the, the as the pendulum begins to swing, as people go, oh, actually, this shouldn't all be just outside my business, it should be inside my business as well, they begin to see that there are reasons why they might want to bring that in, um, but then it can often end up in a pocket or in a silo, and you find that maybe one department in particular ends up with the role of being the so-called innovation team or innovation units, and again, we've seen many businesses implement this successfully um, just by having a a single team focused on uh, innovation means that you can often drive learnings much faster. You can have a team that's undistracted by delivering business as usual work. You can get people through the you know, tasks of prioritization and making it much easier to see which work is, is really paying off inside your business, whether that's a, an R&D unit or an innovation team, like I say. So there can be a lot of uh, benefits of having this setup, of having a dedicated team to innovation. Um, but then what we find is that when those teams can sometimes become hived off, there can often be a desire to bring that into a more centralized uh, way of doing things. So it doesn't sit out on its own, it's more connected to other parts of the business, but it can still be a centralized team. And that's the midpoint of this pendulum. That can be the kind of most steady equilibrium within the whole business. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's right this can often breed, uh, you know, if people thinking it's everybody's job and so therefore it becomes nobody's job. That if everybody is responsible for innovation, then how can anybody get business as usual done? And can often mean that actually projects that would have been highly innovative end up being deprioritized, which can be a problem. <clears throat> what we then see is that there are other modes that go in the other direction. And this is where you kind of move away from uh, you know, the more outsourced or siloed mode into connected and networked. And let me just talk about the, the key differences between connected and networked. A connected organization might have different innovation teams within its different business units operating independently, and they are doing their own thing, keeping their own business going. We see this a lot in big companies where they have maybe different brands under one house, like a big cons uh, conglomerate, uh, say, consumer goods company or an entertainment company. They might have different brands sat underneath it, and they each have their own innovation strands, but they 
they keep their learnings to themselves until things are out in the wild. Whereas a networked innovation culture is where we begin to see that not only are those things happening in individual teams and groups, but we actually begin to see those things being shared across. And again, that can be really helpful in terms of getting things right, but doesn't necessarily mean things are right. In a networked organization where innovation is being shared quite more openly, it's open to a lot more scrutiny. And you often find that businesses then mean that things take longer to get done. It can often slow down the innovation process because everybody gets a say. And in these types of businesses, it's really important that there's a clear delineation on what the prioritization process is around different projects, who gets to lead them, and how are the learnings uh, captured and shared amongst the broader business. So this can be a, a real struggle. So I I wonder where, if you're looking at your own business, maybe you're in a small team, maybe you're in a big team, maybe part of a larger business. Um, you know, this applies to wherever you are in the business. It's not uh, just something related to particularly like marketing or digital or product development. This really is applicable to any part of your business, whether you're working in legal and HR, and you all have processes that need improvement. If you're working in IT, in particular infrastructure and things like that, it can often be very tempting to kind of use this either outsourced or siloed model where it's seen as being just you know a job for that team to do it. So that can be a real problem. Um, so where do you see when you look at this pendulum on your own business maybe let me know in the comments wherever you're watching this biz wherever you're watching this talk <clears throat> Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, please do share it with your teams and ask the question, where are you on the innovation pendulum? Where do you want to be? And how can you move your business forward? And particularly during this time of us all, as I'm recording, still being uh, on the lockdown, you know, during this corona crisis, um, there are different ways that these cultures live themselves out in businesses, uh, whether that is, you know, in the overall culture um, you know, becoming much more siloed because people aren't able to connect as easily. But I think I'm seeing that a lot of businesses are becoming much more networked. They want to share their learnings. They want to share their innovations. So where do you sit on this? Maybe just leave a comment or share this video with a colleague and see if it's helpful. Uh, subscribe for more uh, feeds and follows. You know, I always appreciate that and of course would love your comments. So for now, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in another episode soon of Innovation Culture with me, James Poulter.